Hi folks, thanks for joining us. Today's video is going to be a full tour of our growing areas, showing what we've got growing already and also sharing some of our plans for the growing season ahead. So this is the bed we call our village green bed and right now we have got a lot of peas planted all along the fence and we just make use of this uh, metal fencing so that the peas can climb up um, and it gives a really nice support. So we've got snap peas down here and then over this side all of the peas down this edge and going around the corner are going to be peas for shelling. And we got these in the ground just about a week ago. And going forward, this bed is going to be one of our three sisters beds. So we're going to be planting painted mountain corn into this bed, mixed with our Delicata winter squash, which is a small, really sweet squash variety. And then we'll also add beans that will grow up the corn and I'll probably also add the fourth sister into this bed as well, which will be sunflowers. So in a few months time, this bed will be absolutely packed out with loads of different crops and probably the peas will still be cropping up the fence as well. So really making the best use of the space. So we're in our food forest now and we have been doing a lot of work in the food forest over the winter months. We have been putting in lots of new plants, changing some areas up. You can see here we've got a big bed which we are just in the process of working on. And yeah, lots of new exciting plants have been going into the food forest. It is just springing into life. We've got blossom just coming on this family pear tree here. Our blueberries have been looking absolutely beautiful. And I will be doing a full tour in the food forest really soon, sharing a lot more about what's been happening in here. So make sure you stay tuned for that video as well. But I'm just waiting for everything to green up just a little bit more and then we can show you in its full glory of spring. Okay, up into our main growing area. And Dan has been working super hard up here over the last few weeks. He has literally weeded all of these beds we have just got the wood chip down on the path. Everything is looking fresh and ready to go for the growing season. And it is such a good feeling to have a bit more organization up here and for it to be looking tidy because we do actually find this is quite a hard area to manage. We have sheep sorrel on our land here, which runs everywhere and it does make maintaining these beds more difficult and so by the end of the season it tends to have got the better of us and the weeds take over we still have loads of crops growing but always at the beginning of the season we have to have a really big sort out so consequently we are actually playing with some ideas of what to do with this area going forwards and how we can maybe better manage it so we'll be sharing more about that as we think about it and work out more what we're going to do. But right now we have got a beautiful run of garlic in this bed. This is mainly French garlic other than just a few elephant garlics that I've got at the beginning here. And you can really see the difference in the size of these. These elephant garlic stems, well, they look more like leeks really, but they're not. And then we've got the smaller French garlics here and the colouring on the stems is just beautiful. When the sunlight catches them, they're all red right at the bases and it just 
looks so lovely with the red against the lush green. We've got our strawberry bed here, which I have given a feed of wood chips all over the top of the strawberry beds. And they really, really love that. We've been doing it for about three years now and the, the strong strawberry plants always grow up back through and we've been getting some great harvests from this area uh, without having to divide the plants down really. We've got our first plantings in the ground now as well for spring, which again is such an invigorating thing to see. In this bed here we've got kohlrabi which I planted out about three or four days ago and this was from a sowing in February, end of February. In this bed here, under the planks, I've got a run of carrots and then next to that, which hasn't come up yet, I've got a run of spring onions so that the spring onions will act as a companion plant for the carrots, hopefully deterring the carrot root fly which we have an increasing issue with over the last few years. So I'm doing lots of experiments this year to uh, see how we can manage that better. And then just yesterday, I planted out salad into this bed as well. So we've got a mixture of salad and then we've got some herbs, some chervil and some rocket in this bed also. And the covers are just on at this time of year for bird protection. So we tend to find when we put new plantings out, the birds seem really interested and they want to scratch all around. Um, so yeah, that's what the nets are for. And they do offer a little bit of wind protection as well, which can be beneficial um, at this time of the year when conditions can be quite changeable still. Over in this bed here, this is more new plantings that I did just yesterday. And this is a bed of beetroots. This is three different types of beetroot in here. I've got boltardi, I've got golden beets, and then I've also got candy cane beets. So they come out beautiful stripy red and white. So they'll be getting settled in over the next couple of days. So plans for this area moving forward. Bed three here is going to be a big onion bed and I can never grow enough onions because I use so many of them in cooking. So I'm going to get as many onions as I can in this bed and we've already got those growing on from seed in our polytunnel. And then the onions will come out around the end of July, beginning of August. And then I will do a second planting in this bed and it will be autumn turnips and an autumn sown of kohlrabi. Bed two here will be leeks and lettuce and I'll probably put parsnips in this bed as well and then that may be followed with some other autumn sowings, probably a later sowing of beetroots and maybe some Florence fennel as well. The bottom bed where the garlic is, pretty much that is just a fixed garlic bed because the garlic comes out around the end of June, beginning of July and it is only a couple of months before I then start sew sewing it again. So it's not really enough time to get a second crop into that area, but I am hopefully gonna try sewing um, mustard at the same time as my garlic this year as uh, like a companion plant kind of cover crop for the winter as well. So excited to try that. This bed here, I'm hoping to do a mixture of grains and green greens. And I'm hoping to try things like amaranth and quinoa this year. And then that'll be mixed in with some, um, probably some rainbow chard and just any greenery, any leafy greens that I need to find a space for. This top bed here, we've got a beautiful amount of leeks still growing in here. And we are cropping these leeks just as we need them at the moment. And whilst we have had quite a lot of slugs and snails around, in fact, I didn't show you as we walked through, but we had our first planting of peas out on the poles just down by the gate. 
and they got really badly attacked by slugs and snails. So we're not sure how they're going to bounce back. But other than that, I'm feeling really grateful because I've been seeing lots of posts of people's um, leeks absolutely packed out with slugs and snails in the necks of them. So we're feeling really, really lucky that we haven't got them on that volume here just yet. But we've got a good amount of leeks and they really cover the gap at this time of year when we've pretty much finished up our onions, we're getting to the end of our garlic, but we have still got beautiful lush leeks in the ground. But like I say, we just harvest them as we need. So we have just come round the top here now. Some of these beds here, these empty beds, we, um, Dan's mum grows some crops in these, so she'll be putting these beds to use this year. And this is also another one of her beds um, that she grows cut flowers in. So she'll be coming around soon and having a good tidy up. And this bed looks lovely with all of her dahlias in in the summer. This is our kind of semi-permanent bean bed. And right now in these three areas here, we've got our broad beans growing and they've been munched on a bit by the slugs and snails but they are pulling through so that's really good to see so fingers crossed but growth on them has been quite slow and you can see you know they've been stripped quite a lot on the bottom but they are picking up and i'm sure they're going to pull through and then after the broad beans obviously this area will be followed with our tall beans and the beans that we grow here are all beans that we save for drying um, to store for the winter. So it gives us a really good plant protein that we can grow ourselves here. This is my elephant garlic bed. If you've been following our channel for a while, you will know that I love garlic. I use a lot of it. And for the last couple of years, we have been trying to work up to having enough garlic to be able to sell. I think garlic would be a really good cash crop for us. Um, we just need to get the volume up enough so that we have enough for our own seed for the following year. And then also enough for us and then we can sell the surplus. Last year I had a bit of a problem with drying the garlic. So it didn't, I didn't have as much to plant back as I was hoping, but hopefully this year will be the year. So like I said, Dan has had a really good tidy up of this area. He's been working really hard up here. We do still have this area here to sort out and all these stems at the back here, this is our Jerusalem artichokes and they look beautiful in the summer. They grow really tall. They have little yellow flowers late in the season. And then they give us a beautiful tuber to be harvesting all through the winter. We just harvest them again as we need. We have got far more than we need, but that is the nature of Jerusalem artichokes. They do tend to multiply incredibly readily and you never get them all out. So we've basically kind of turned this bed over to Jerusalem artichokes. Just let them do their thing. We always have them. We will have a tidy up along the front here and then our plant courgettes all along the front of this bed here and they can just trail down the bank and that worked really well last year so we'll be doing that again this year. Come on Murphs! <laughs> Come on boy! Have you been harvesting yak on Murph? Come on boy! Okay, so over this side of our land, we have got lots of really exciting improvements going on as well. So this area here has had black plastic on it for about two years or more now, purely to help us manage the areas until we um, get to a stage where we can use them. And again, Dan has been working super hard and he has been turning this into a new potato bed for this year. So we've pulled back the plastic, we've been bringing in lots of compost and 
using other materials that we had on site already from our hotbed from last year to make a really good base layer on here. And he has planted our first early potatoes in here already just a few days ago. I think he did those on the 25th or 26th of March. And then, yeah, I was just talking about the elephant garlic. So we thought we were going to lose a lot of our elephant garlic last year because we had a difficulty drying it in the damp conditions. And we'd actually thrown a load of it in the bush to break down because we didn't think it was any good. And Dan spotted the other day that it was all sprouting. So a bit of an experiment, it's late going in, but he's put uh, some of the elephant garlics into this bed as well. And we're just gonna see what happens. It might be that we just use it a bit like a spring onion um, and slice it up if it doesn't form properly because elephant garlic does need a really long time in the ground to form up its massive bulbs. But yeah, hopefully we'll still be able to make use of what we thought was a lost crop. And then over here, you may have seen one of our recent videos about putting in raised beds. We have got four new beautiful metal raised beds that we are really, really impressed with. And so plans for this area. This is gonna be parsnips and carrots and, and spring onions in this bed. And I'm doing this as a trial to see if lifting these crops off the ground helps to protect them against the carrot rust or carrot root fly because the carrot root fly only flies very low to the ground. So yeah, excited to see how that turns out this year. These two beds here are gonna be sweet potatoes. We will still be planting sweet potatoes in the ground also. But again, as many of you will know who've been following us for a while, we had quite an issue with rats enjoying our sweet potatoes last year. So again, this is another method we are trying to see if we can get the better of the rats and protect our harvest so that we have more of it to enjoy for ourselves, which is after all the aim of the game when growing all of these vegetables. This bed here is another little trial bed. And this bed, I'm seeing how many beautiful, fresh veggies I can get out of one small space. Um, so it's going to be a lot of leafy greens in this bed. Crops that I think, if you have only got a small space to grow in, crops that I feel are some of the most valuable ones that you can relatively easily grow for yourself. So things that we use a lot of, so cut and come again salads, green leaves, uh, herbs. That's going to be my focus on this bed, but I'm going to be sharing a lot more about that as we move through the season. In our net house, uh, you may have seen on our last video, I talked quite a lot about our net house. We grow our brassicas in there. It gives us protection from the cabbage white butterflies, which are everywhere come June, July. And it means, again, we can grow really good kale and any other brassicas that we like. Purple sprouting broccoli is, is what we're harvesting at the moment. And yeah, we just, over the, the season, it will get absolutely packed out with greens in there that will see us right through the winter. So this is our first poly tunnel and in this tunnel we grow a beautiful winter crop of salad and over the last couple of weeks the salad has just upped its game for growth and we cannot keep up. I've actually already been in here this morning and from this section here I have picked two massive bowls of salad today to take to our family who we're going to be seeing later on and I literally could have harvested four times the amount already but it is such a beautiful crop to have all through the winter to have that lovely fresh crunch to add to meals. I've never really been into winter salads before I started growing it myself but I value it so much now. 
something I'm trying for the first time this year in this tunnel as well is we're going for an early crop of broad beans. So I planted out broad beans in uh, late January in here. They were beans I'd already started from seed um, in trays. And they're just starting to flower now. So these ones should crop quite a way ahead of our outdoor broad beans. So that should help bridge the hungry gap a little bit. And then over this side of the tunnel, we have got lots of beautiful herbs. I'll just hop over the salad. So we've got French parsley here. So that's the flatter leaf parsley. And again, this literally in the last week has burst into life. We've got curly parsley here. And we've got lots of Cherville down here. And some of this wasn't supposed to be here. I think last year I added a lot of seeded Cherville to our compost bin. And so this is kind of self seeded, but I've let it be here because I love it as a herb. I use handfuls of it in cooking. And also, as some of you will know, we should have had kale growing all along here. I was doing an overwinter um, kale crop but the rats got in and put pay to most of the cow. To my surprise, one of them has actually grown back from a tiny little stem. And so we do have some Cavallo Nero growing in here, but it should have been all the way down the length of this. Also, um, the spinach has bounced back. The rats chewed the spinach right down as well. And actually some of it has come back really nicely and we've been getting some great harvests of spinach. This was a giant leaf spinach here. It's actually getting a little bit too hot for the spinach in here now on the sunny days. We're actually getting up to about 35 degrees in here when the sun is shining. So the spinach is getting close to bolting. But yeah, really, really stoked that we did end up getting some harvest from it because I thought pretty much this whole side was a loss. The spring onions that we've got here, we'll be harvesting those really soon. A couple of those are pretty much ready actually. So we do have lots of spring onions down this side, lots of beautiful salad, and we let things go to flower because these flowers also make a really tasty addition to salads at this time of year too. And come the middle of May, all of this will be stripped out and then we'll be planting our summer crops in here. So it'll be tomatoes, aubergines, peppers, all of the beautiful summer crops, cucumbers. They are all going to be being started from seed or they already are in the polytunnel right now. This is our second polytunnel and in here we are growing an early crop of new potatoes and they are coming along beautifully. Again, like I keep saying, the last two weeks, everything has just leapt into life. Our sunlight hours haven't been great. We've had a lot of rain, well, for the whole of the last year, really. But the plants, they just still know what to do. They know what time of year it is and they are growing like mad. This variety here is our earliest and our strongest variety. We've got four different varieties in here. They're all kind of coming through at different stages. We're going to be sharing a lot more about our early potatoes, so stay tuned for that video. But we will be harvesting these before the middle of May. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this polytunnel will also be being turned over to all the summer crops. We do more tomatoes in here. And this tunnel, we also grow lots of different melons in, which is an absolute delight. And I just sowed the seed of all of our melons yesterday. So if melons is something that you have got an inside space that you can grow yourself, then I would highly recommend them and get sowing the seeds as soon as possible because they do need quite a long season to grow. So another crop that we trialed in this polytunnel for the first time last year and also outside is taro. And as you can see, taro has this beautiful tropical leaf and the leaves get really, really big. And then we enjoyed harvesting the beautiful tuber that grows under the ground. 
and tarot isn't something you hear a lot about in this country but Dan is really passionate about exotic crops and so this is something that we're doing lots of trials with to see if we can hone growing it in the UK and we had a really good harvest last year for our first year so these are plants that he has overwintered so we should have even more of a head start than last year um, which will hopefully give us a better yield overall. So we've got some plants here and then he's got some more plants under the net here. And this one here is known as a tree tomato or a tamarillo. And I actually grew that when I lived in New Zealand. And they kind of produce a fruit which looks a bit like a cross between a plum and a tomato. And this plant was actually gifted to us from Craig at Grow Paradise. So you can check out his YouTube channel as well. He also loves growing lots of tropical plants here in the UK. And this is where it all begins in here. This is where we start all of our seeds. Um, we use these propagation domes uh, for protection from rats and mice because a few years ago I did all of my first sowings, left them all out the first night and they all got dug up overnight. So we have learned again every year with gardening, we learn so much. They also really help to increase the humidity and keep the soil temperatures up and keep everything nice and moist as well. So just yesterday, I sowed all of our melons, as I was just saying. I also sowed some loofers and some Armenian cucumbers. We've got tomatoes coming on really well here. We've got about four different varieties of tomatoes, a mixture of cherry tomatoes and bigger beefsteak tomatoes. Um, we've got peppers, so sweet peppers and also hot peppers coming on here and some aubergines. I always find, particularly with the hot peppers, I get quite patchy germination, so I do always sow a lot more of those than I need. And sometimes, like last year, we end up with a lot more hot chilli plants than we anticipated, but that's okay. We've got bagfuls of chillies in the freezer, which we are still enjoying now. I've got Cape gooseberries coming on here that we also have in our polytunnels. Um, a second sowing of um, spring onions. We've got some flowers, some more greens and lettuce. Garlic kale is something I'm growing for the first time this year that I'm really excited to try. We've got lots of onions here. This was my first sowing of onions. More herbs coming through. This is parsley. Parsley takes a long time to germinate, so it's a bit behind the other things I sowed it with. Again, more herbs in this tray. We've got dill, coriander, uh, celery coming through. A second sowing of lettuce for this year. That will be going into um, the bed, uh, bed two outside more onions and these are just the spare plants that are left over from my plantings over the last week and it is a good idea to hold a few plants back because if things um, get munched or if you lose plants then it's good to have a couple that you can put back in to fill the gaps but april is just about the biggest month you can get for sowing seed and I will be doing a lot more sowing over the next few weeks. You can pretty much sow everything in April. The next big sowing I'll be doing will be things like cucumbers, courgettes, pumpkins, all of those gorgeous crops that we will be enjoying through summer and right into autumn and winter next year. So you may be thinking that growing all of this food seems like a lot of effort. And you're right, it is. However, growing all of this beautiful fresh food saves us a lot of money and gives us security in a non-financial way. And this gives us back the most precious gift of all, which is time and freedom. 
I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we're growing and hearing our plans for the season ahead. If you have enjoyed this video today, then please make sure that you click the thumbs up button just down below. Also leave us some comments, letting us know what your plans are for your garden this year. We love hearing from you guys as well and hearing what you have to share too. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel also if you haven't already and we will catch you here for another video soon. Thanks for watching guys. Peace and plants.